Hey folks, it's Matt once again, and second time I have to do this because stop working at seven minutes. <laughs> Just, I don't know why. But uh, I was talking about Manhunter because I reviewed pretty much all the other Hannibal Lecter films. I reviewed Sons of the Lambs, which I enjoy. Hannibal, which is 50-50 for me. I enjoy... Uh, I didn't, didn't really care for Red Dragon. I didn't. It's not a crap movie. It's not a piece of crap. But I said a lot on my Red Dragon review. I just go watch this. I mean, this is technically the first film with a Hannibal Lecter character. It's based on the novel Red Dragon. I I think they didn't want to use Red Dragon because at the time they thought it'd be confused. People would think it was a kung fu movie or something if you say Red Dragon, which is a silly notion. I mean, this could have easily been called Red Dragon. Um, and, the, and this one, Hannibal Lecter, he's in it for a little bit, played by Brian Cox, who I thought did fine. The cast, you have William Peterson as Will Graham, who, of course, most famous for CSI. I liked him as an actor. I know he was in the film To Live and Die in L.A., which I remember not caring for the ending of that film, but I haven't seen that film in a while. But William Peterson, I always thought, was a good actor. You also have uh, Tim Grice. You have Joan Allen, who plays the blind lady, who kind of gets into a relationship with, we find out, is the killer, played by Tom Noonan, who is played by Ray Fiennes in Red Dragon. When I say Red Dragon, I mention the 2002 film. This was a 1986 movie. You also have Dennis Farina, Stephen Lane, I said Brian Cox. I thought Michael Mann did a really good job directing this. I, I'm a fan of Michael Mann. I really enjoy Collateral, Heat, films I would like to review one day down the road. Didn't, did not see his new film Black Cat, but the running time just didn't appeal to me. Maybe I'll give that a look one day down the road when it comes out on DVD. Um, but I'll say this. This is my favorite film that deals with the Hannibal Lecter character. I will say I prefer Anthony Hopkins and Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal, but I don't think Brian Cox did a bad job. It's just this film itself I prefer. I love the tone, the mood, the atmosphere that Michael Mann gives it, the usage of lighting, whether it be blue lighting in certain sequences and how he directs the camera, certain POV shots, certain usage of slow-mo, uh, the music that's used, like In a Guy, the Vita Baby in the finale. I really liked the score. I thought the score was well done, very eerie at times. Uh, I liked uh, the score, the Will Graham's theme, which you can find on YouTube. I thought that was a really good piece of score. I really liked the music. It just had a style to it. That's the thing. That's why Red Dragon just seems so plain. It was cause Dred I, mean, I don't hate Brett Ratner. There's films of his I like, but Brett Ratner is not Michael Mann. I mean, Brett, that Red Dragon just seemed very plain while this has a style and I saw this film a long time ago well before Red Dragon so when I saw Red Dragon I'm like I know they're both based on the same novel Red Dragon by Thomas Harris um, I don't think they wanted to use the name Red Dragon because they thought I'd be confused with a martial arts film which is a silly idea I think it could have still been called Red Dragon but I never hated the title Manhunter and I just, watching Red Dragon and then watching this is, once again, eye-opener that I think this is a much better version of that. People say Red Dragon in 2002 is much more faithful. I think this is a better one. I really do. In many ways. And if you're wondering, this isn't the actual cover. The actual cover is this, but in red. But uh, it's a shitty cover, so I put just this was in the on the inside, so I put it on the cover there. Just looks better. It's a theatrical poster. Why do I like this film? I, again, I think Michael Mann did a great job directing. Has a solid mood, atmosphere. I thought you get more in depth with the Will Graham character played by William Peterson. I didn't hate Edward Norton and Red Dragon. I didn't. But I do think William Pearson did do a better job because not only of his performance, but what they give him to work with. You really get a sense that he's really delving back into the dark world of getting to the mind of a 
killer, of being a profiler. You can really tell that he's getting back into that dark world, and it's because of Michael Mann's direction, because of the usage of music. Um, I just, you know, certain scenes, like, if you're wondering what this says, this says, it's just you and me now, sport. That's a scene that's not in Red Dragon. And maybe because Michael Mann had more leniency to do stuff, because he didn't have to follow every single thing to a T, and he didn't have Sons of the Lambs to compare it to, because at times Red Dragon was like, oh shit, remember Sons of the Lambs? Okay, we gotta have these two talk more. We gotta have... If that was in the novel, so be it. But still, it's like, I watch a Red Dragon, and I'm like, oh shit, Sounds of Lambs won an Oscar, shitload of Oscars, let's get Edward Norton and Anthony Hopkins talking, and him behind the cell, it just, again, Edward Norton wasn't bad, but I felt a bit more intensity with this character, and this performance by William Peterson, and plus this character's more badass, like, there's a scene where he's t talking with a journalist, and Red Dragon, he just shoves the guy. And this, he takes reporter and flings him over the hood, and the lake hits and breaks the windshield. And there's certain pieces of dialogue when, like when uh, his superior, Dennis Farina, who was played by Harvey Keitel in the 2002 film, Dennis Farina's like, hey, it's too late. And William Peterson is like, I'll tell you when it's too fucking late, okay? It's not too late. I'll tell you when it's too fucking late, okay? I was doing fine, but you came over and you put these pictures a family wanting to that was murdered and you knew I would do it because I'd be thinking of family three, four, and five. Okay? I'll tell you when it's too fucking late. I'm like, that's a man. Edward Norton just seems more we you know I don't know. Ron Howard. <laughs> I don't know what Opie Taylor is what I'm thinking. Opie, I don't know, just I think someone mentioned that he's like more of a boy scout while he's more of a badass. And I can agree to that to its extent. I really can. I'm not trying to down Edward Norton, but I do like this character much more in this movie. Plus, this movie is much more about Will Graham and that character. You have certain sequences with his wife and certain sequences with his kid. His family's developed more in this film. Not to the extent it has to be 30 minutes of them talking and singing Kumbaya and shit, but it's more certain impact so I can feel the, his family more. It's much more about this character. I mean, that's why the tower kind of fits. It's about him, the Manhunter. I mean, the villain, you don't even see the villain until like an hour in, and it's fine, because this film really is about this character, while Red Dragon in 2002, okay, Anthony Hopkins is very popular, so he's the first guy we see in the movie, in the well, the, he's not the first thing you see in the movie, but it's a, a big scene with Anthony Hopkins, and then we have Edward Norton, then we have a lot more scenes with the Hannibal Lecter, Anthony Hopkins character. Again, if that's in the novel, oh well, it's more faithful. I like what Michael Mann did more in 1986. It just, it was much more Will Graham's movie, which I'll get into. And again, the mood, the eerie uh, musical score, like, even the way it opens, I mean, the way it opened in Red Dragon with Anthony Hopkins having a party. And saying, well, um, if I told you what was in that, you wouldn't try it. She's asking, hey, what's in the food? Or how do you, what do you do to make this? Now, how this film starts off, you have light going through a house. This flashlight, POV shot, looks over here at kids, looks over here at a woman who wakes up slow-mo, she's about to realize, oh my god, there's someone in the house. Boom, cuts the title screen with an eerie score. And you go, oh shit, okay, that's kind of creepy. What's going to happen? Oh shit. And yeah, there's, I mean, again, because they're both based on the same novel, you don't see a lot of similarities between this and Red Dragon in 2002. Like the superior officer, Harvey Keitel in that film, or in this film, Dennis Farina, which, again, Harvey Keitel was not bad, but I like Dennis Farina. I think because if I had a pick, I like Dennis Farina more as an actor. But I like Harvey Keitel as an actor. But if I had a pick, I'd put Dennis Farina. <laughs> this little scene here where this picture's at, where Will Graham is 
talking to a journalist, making shit up to get the killer piss to come after him. And they say something like, oh yeah, he uh, thinks of his mother or something. Or he talks about, uh, what was it, uh, his mother... He had sexual relations with his mother or something, and that's for to laughs. And everyone looks at him and he gets you know serious again. So I like that. It's like a little little thing that gave him a little bit of a personality. Again, the scene where uh William Peterson is yelling at him, he's yelling bad. Yeah, I know and I do it again. I fucking do it again. You see you have more of an intensity to this film. That's the thing. This film has more of an intensity, atmosphere, style, mood to it than Red Dragon. Red Dragon just seemed plain. That's why in that review I compared it to bread. It just sort of blasé. It's competently made, but at the same time, why not just watch this, which is more moody and more stylistic and more interesting and more intense. Um, I mean, just like I said, the way it opens up. And they ha it's an opera scene and Red Dragon. It's an opera scene. And then he's talking. And then Edward Norton comes in. And they have a little you know, scuffle. Here, creepy flashlight. Who is it? Point of view. Slow-mo. Woman waking up. Already see, as you know, her killer. Eerie store plane. And like I said, like Red Dragon in 2002, Superior talking to Will Graham, here played by William Peterson, him looking through the house, investigating. But even this, I like the way it's done in this film more than Red Dragon. I like the way it's done here when he's investigating because he gives some, Michael Mann gives some interesting shots, some POV shots. There's a shot on top of a door when it opens. Like the shot's right here and the door opens and you see the William Peterson walk through. And one thing I didn't mention in the Red Dragon review, um, I seen a moment of acting I did not like for Edward Norton. There's a scene where, actually I'll get to that a little bit because um, that doesn't come yet in, in this movie. Because I want to talk about, even, the sound going sound stupid, even when he looks at the room and you, he sees the blood, it seems grislier in this movie. I don't know why. It just seemed like, I don't know if there's more blood or just the way it's it looks. Because, you know, it's not too polished. You know, Hollywood style polished. I don't know what it is, but it just looks grizzlier. And he's watching the videos. And, like I said in the Red Dragon review, it seems like this he figures it out more himself than Edward Norton's character. Edward Norton's character still figures stuff out. But it's like, oh, I gotta go back to Anthony Hopkins. I gotta go back to Anthony Hopkins. I gotta go back to Anthony Hopkins. He doesn't do that as much in this movie, the the Will Graham character. So I'm like, okay, he's more. He's more of a independent, and. You just get that presence of, okay, this guy has been through the ringer. He has dealt with the, the dark side. Um, while Edward Norton, again, you know, someone said it best. He kind of looks like a Boy Scout. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, he does show fear. I mean, like uh, I like this done more than in Red Dragon, where after talking with Lecter, William Peterson... He's walking, but he's like walking faster and faster, and he's getting dizzy. His, you know, he's have POV shots of his face, and he heaves over, and he's breathing hard because this is the guy who had, you know, given him these stars that tried to kill him before. So he's like freaking out, and he's trying to get further, and further away. I just like the way the scene was done; it was more interesting. And while in Red Dragon, it's just he calmly walks away, takes it off, and then you see his armpits drenched and like his uh, shirts wet from his armpits because he was sweating and I'm like okay all right <clears throat> I get the idea but it's just I don't know if I want to say more visceral but just the way they did in this film <laughs> I'm so excited I dropped it just 
made more of an impact. But I was like I was saying, um, he's um, the character in both this and Red Dragon realize, oh wait, wait a minute. Uh, there's talcum powder residue, but there was no talcum powder in the house. Oh, let me guess, you probably took your gloves off, right? When William Pearson does that realization, it seems more real. It seems more believable. I don't know how to describe it. It just, he seemed more real and believable when he's delivering that dialogue. That's one scene in Red Dragon that I thought Edward Norton's performance was a little bit over the top. Maybe because the way it was shot, because Edward Norton's like right here, is like, you took your gloves off, didn't you, son of a bitch? Like, but here is William Pearson looking, because he's look. William Pearson looking at videotapes, he's like, yeah, you did that, didn't you? Yeah, you did this and you did this. He just seemed, William Pearson just seemed more real. It seemed like the character had a bit more depth into this film. I don't know how to describe it. This is why I wish I could use clips. Because I just compare them both. Here's a clip from this movie, here's a clip from that movie. It'd be much easier to explain than just try and do it verbally. Um, and like I said, I mean, it has similar stuff. You have the reporter that had taken pictures of him when he was in a hospital. But again, Edward Norton just shows Philip Seymour Hoffman, but William Pearson, he takes Stephen Lane, who's the reporter, flips him over on her car so that his, the guy's leg bashes a wind and breaks a windshield. I'm like, that's more of a badass. That has more of a he has more of a physicality than Edward Norton's character. Now maybe you could say, well, would you really buy that with Edward Norton? Well, still, I mean, I'm just calling it like it is. I'm just calling it like it is. But, I mean, you do have stuff like him seeing Hannibal Lecter, and I thought Brian Cox did fine. And you have certain parts that it's the same dialogue, because, again, it's based on the novel. Again, I would say I prefer Anthony Hopkins, but again, like I said before in other reviews, I thought Anthony Hopkins' performance in Red Dragon wasn't too great. Well, I thought he did a much better job in Sounds of Lands. I thought he did a better job in Hannibal. Um, and if someone asks, I did not see the Hannibal TV series, I'm not interested in. And if I haven't said it before, I'll say it now, I'm not rewatching watching Hannibal Rising. I saw that once and it was a piece of shit. Useless prequel. Don't need to be explained type of shit. But like I said, uh, he sees Lecter, goes out. You know, POV, him running away and, you know, breathing hard and, you know, recovering. And I like the fact that he wants to see Lecter because he wants to recover the mindset of what is to get inside the mind of a serial killer. That it is, it is something that, you know, you can't push yourself too far. Otherwise, you will be a lot like the person you're chasing. Which you didn't really get that at all in Red Dragon. But you get that in this. I thought that was interesting that, you know, don't fall into the darkness, don't fall into... I, like I said, I think this has a little bit more depth to that character. Uh, while in Red Dragon, he goes there so he can move the plot forward. So that uh, Anthony Hopkins is say something about, well, da 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 Oh, wait, huh? What? Lecter said this, and Lecter said that. Well, this guy's figuring out more by himself, which is the reason why he's, you know, fucking there in the first place, why the official supervisor got him back to help them out on the case. And the case is this killer who's been nicknamed the Tooth Fairy, who murdered two families, and they have a time crunch until he murders the third family. But even just certain shots without dialogue, just him being on an airplane, uh, has dreaming dreaming of his wife and kid and he's so out of it he didn't put away the crime photos and a little kid sees that and he's you know of course a little bit uh, oops <laughs> or uh, I mean like Red Riding he looks at the first house he looked at the second house 
there's a note between Hannibal Lecter and the Tooth Fairy Killer and their exchange and stuff. Should we let him in? Should we let in the newspaper? Well, we got to. Finding out, oh shit, there's this code. Oh shit, it has your uh, your address on it, stuff like that. Lecter gave it away. Which actually is weird. Chris Elliott, who's been in films like Groundhog Day and a lot of stuff, he actually has a tiny role. And a scene where they're talking around a, a table. I'm like, oh, that's Chris Elliott. That's weird. And then there's something in this that's not in Red Dragon. Maybe it wasn't a novel, but I actually like this scene. It, again, it shows his uh, obsession, maybe, is or his... Maybe it's that obsession. That's not the right word. His determination on catching it. It's like, uh, use me as bait. We'll say that yeah, he had such a relationship with his mom, and he's this and that. And that's when, like I said, when he mentions that, Dennis Farina laughs, <laughs> and then he quietly you know, becomes quiet. I thought he had a little personality on him. But then you have a scene where there's a stakeout. This is not in Red Dragon. Maybe it's not in the novel either. But I like this. He has a stakeout, and he's walking as bait, and he sees a guy coming forward towards him, and they stop him. And you get that shot. If you've seen promotion materials, there's a shot with him with a gun like this. That's from this scene here. I like the way the shot's structured. I like the angles they use. I like when they get the wrong guy. The guy says, Why are you moving slow motion, man? Huh? I'm being mugged. <laughs> Telling the cops, like, Why are you moving slow motion? Don't you see I'm being mugged? I thought that was a nice little uh, funny line. <laughs> Yeah, the reporter just grabbed him. And I thought the killer, Ray Fiennes, again, was not bad acting-wise, but I thought Tom Noonan was much better. Nothing against Ray Fiennes. I don't think he did a bad job, but Tom Noonan, he was creepier. He was... You had you didn't see the killer at all until an hour, like not even his hands or anything. You, at least that I remember. Until like an hour in. And the first time that he's, we see it is when Stephen Lane... He hears the voice, opens his eyes, and he has that horrified look. And then you see Tom Noonan in this that creepy thing where he has half his face covered. And um, I, I just like the way that scene was done. You know, do you see? You know, do you see? Ah, I just like it's hard to describe. I like the way it was done in here better. I like because Tom Noonan was creepier. Um, I like the the setting that they used more. You know, that backdrop. They use more and oh, just the, the editing. I don't know how to describe it. Just something about it. I like that's the way it was. The, that scene was done here more than in uh, Red Dragon, and even the reveal. Where actually before that, because um, of course that's that's when the reporter dies. Another piece of dialogue I really like from William Peterson's character where he's talking to the journalist. This isn't Red Dragon, but it made this character even more of a badass. Where the, the reporter, Stephen Lane, asks him, you know, does this affect your sex life or something like that? And he's like, no, it doesn't affect mine, it affects yours. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I thought, yeah, William Peterson, you know, he is more of a badass than Edward Norton. But at the same time, he has more of a intensity you know, really going in depth to find this killer. And jump ahead, there's certain dialogue scenes that he has with his wife. Like, the wife in uh, Red Dragon, really she's there so that he can train her to shoot a gun. So she shoots the gun at the end to kill the killer. Here, there's certain scenes of dialogue where she's like, you, know, you shouldn't be doing this, you, know, you don't make yourself sick. But she's not being a bitch about it either. She's still she's just being a good wife. You know, worrying about her husband. And then later on there's a good scene with his son. I don't remember any much of any actual dialogue scenes between him and his son and Red Dragon. But again, it made the family more in this film than in Red Dragon. Because the son is like, well, what happened, you know, back then with this, you know, lector guy? And because he's you know confused and stuff, and you know a father having to explain to his son what happens and the evils in the world and what happened to him and that uh, you know I had to think like him, and you know I was 
I got healed physically, but then mentally I was still there. I had to heal myself mentally, and you and your mom helped with that. To the point that, you know, the kid understands, and they're doing all this in the grocery store. It's like, what kind of coffee do you like? Huh? Hey, this is, a uh, you like Folgers, right? Mom likes that, too. So, they, you know, they share a little moment. I mean, the music helps as well. The performances, I thought, were really good. I don't think there's any bad performance in this film. Frankie Faison, who is the Barney character in the other films, does appear in this. He appears as a cop in the last portion of the, of the movie. So it's cool that Frankie Faison, he plays a different character, but he's in, I don't think he's in Hannibal Rising, but he's in the other ones. So that's interesting. Uh, but again, there's certain pieces of dialogue, like he pushes his wife and kid away not in an asshole way, but like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, and he's gotta be in, alone in his mind frame. So he's like sitting there and he's like, you see in the trailer pretty much, you watch the trailers at the end of the trailer and he goes, just me, what was it, uh, one get the dialogue right. It's just you and me now, sport. I don't find you, goddammit. Um, but again, it's like, okay, I'm with this guy, I'm with this character. I really am. And even little stuff like, okay, they both have the scene with the reporter and the killer has the reporter. And you have the scene where the reveal of the reporter in the wheelchair on fire. But I like the way it was done here where there's a guard that cuts and you just see this blue glow. And like, what's that blue glow? Because you're supposed to be, this is the first time you've seen the film. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But what's that blue glow? Blue orange I mean orange glow it was blue man the flames would really be hot if the flames are blue but isn't that what it is if a fire is really really hot it's blue maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm thinking of I always think of an oven sometimes I see blue on the oven but you see this orange glow what is that and it cuts the guy's horrified and then the wheelchair goes right towards camera on fire and it made more of an impact like Hmm, what's that? What's it? It's an orange glow. What's that? And then, oh shit, here's a guy on fire and flames coming right towards you in the camera. It gave more of an impact while in Red Dragon it was woman goes and looks and you just see it going like this. And you're like, you just compare those two scenes. They're the same thing as someone sees a fucking guy on fire in a wheelchair. But then you see how it's done. And Red Dragon is very blasé. Here, it's a little mysterious. Oh, what's his orange glow? Cuts back to the guy. He's horrified. What's he horrified about? Boom. Right in camera. Oh, shit. I remember the first time I saw this. I go, oh, shit. That's a reaction you should have. You did more of this. Yes. I did. Brett Ryder, I didn't. I like Rush Hour, Rush Hour 2, Money Talks, but Michael Mann is a much better director than fucking Brett Ratner. Brett Ratner, I would call... I wouldn't say a bad director. I would just say... Eh, director. Like, eh, that kind of director. Um, and you do get the stuff, you know, the killer... You know, Falling for this blind woman who's near at his workplace. She does stuff to help his work. He works at this, uh, as we find out, you know, this video stuff. And, you know, takes her to see, to, well, she's blind, she can't see, to feel the tiger, like in, you, you see that in this film, you see that in Red Dragon. Um, little differences. You get the idea that the girl give him a blowjob while here it's you know they have sex but little stuff like in a way Red Dragon they try to make you this sort of dynamic of no I don't want to shoot her normally shoot myself this and that they don't really do that in this which I'm kind of I prefer this because it just made the villain creepier made the film the villain I don't need to feel sorry for the villain. I don't. I don't even feel sorry for him. I don't, oh, poor baby. I know that shit. I know that's the stuff in real life, but it is a movie at the same time. Sometimes I didn't appreciate that. Didn't need it. And it was 
I like the fact that it is Will Graham's story. It's not, let's spend 30 minutes on this. Oh, wait, where's Will Graham? No, it's, you get an, I did just the amount of time I need for the killer, Tom Noonan, just the amount of time of the woman, Joan Allen, that you see who's blind. I did enough. I did just the right amount. I don't need any more. Same with the Hannibal Lecter. And Red Dragon is like, okay, uh, it seems less of Will Graham's character's movie. Maybe that's not the right way to put it in, but there's a lot more of the other people doing screen time while this is more of the screen time goes to the Will Graham character, which I liked because I was with him. I was behind him 100%. Like another scene that they do in this, which they don't do in Red Dragon, when uh, the the character in his William Peterson, he goes back into one of the victims' uh, house and he puts himself in the killer's shoes, saying, "I'm doing this, I'm doing that." He even pictures himself in the room with the victim, and I like the way it's done. Really cool, where he sees the victim because the killer put mirrors in the eyes, and you see that the mirrors in the eyes, and she's looking like this and uh, just really weird creepy look to it and uh, I thought that was really cool I thought it was a really cool way they did that and him sort of picturing himself in there it's like okay I do where this guy's going and then he's more intense where he's like you know I'll tell you when it's too fucking late because Dennis Freeman's like it's too late it's getting about the time that he's probably going to do this and he figures it out on his own the one call he gets from Lecter was him just talking about you know being in that mindset, but he figures it out on his own. He doesn't figure it out because of Lecter. He figures it out on his own, which I'm like, yes, that gives me more thumbs up to the main character. It shows that okay, there's a reason why people go to this character to be a profiler. This is this is him getting into the mind frame. He's actually pushed away his wife and kid. He's you know by himself. Delve them back into that mindset. You buy that hook line, hook line and sinker in this film with the store, the mood, the atmosphere. People are like, oh, you're peddling this up. I think this film ins did inspire films like Seven. You have a lot of other films like Copycat. Um, you know, other those kind of movies. I think they, did, you know, CSI. You know, the all those shows. Not just because this guy starred in CSI, but. You can't tell me that they didn't look at this film because this film didn't do much when it came out, which sucks. And this is just the same IMDb rating as Red Dragon. I think that's horse shit. Because I think this is a much better version of Red Dragon. It's more stylized, more interesting, more intense, more moody, more stylistic. It has a better score, it has a better cinematography. I want to mention the cinematographer Dante Spinotti. Probably said the name wrong. I thought he did a great job as the DP. It's a good looking movie and a good usage of the widescreen. <clears throat> but he's looking at the tapes and he figured out what needs to happen. Goes off there. And again, I like the finale in this more. Red Dragon, the blind lady, the house is on fire. And then, oh, did he shoot himself? Well, obviously not because you know that's not going to no, be the end of the movie. House blows up, a little bit of CGI word, at least a little bit. Comes home, he gets shot, shoots the guy. The wife, oh, the wife finally pops in again and then shoots the, the killer. Uh, here, though, it was much more badass ending. He sees the his woman, you know, the blind lady. Oh, I guess you don't really love me. You're seeing someone else or a friend or whatever it was. Playing in a guy at Vita at his place, and just as badass. Just they get there. William Pearson sees that this girl Joan Allen is in danger. Runs in. The music is soft, slow motion. In a guy at Vita, gets sliced up here on the face. Gets knocked out. Other cops come in. A little bit of wanty editing. They, uh, the director did in this. A little bit wanty, but a little bit interesting. Like certain, like if you see it, you know what I'm talking about. But 
you get the idea, oh, this one cop got the back of his head blown off. Did you see a little bit of blood on the back here? Another cop gets killed. Uh, Dennis Frank gets shot. He doesn't get killed. He just hurt. And Will Pearson, he's the one who shoots it. Not his wife, not someone else. He shoots it. Boo, 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 boo. As in a God of Vida is playing. I thought it was pretty cool. And to be honest, I mean, I say wanty editing because I'm sure other people would see and go, what's up with that? So just letting people know ahead of time. But it didn't bother me that much. It's a little bit weird, but I'm like, okay, kind of interesting as well. But I thought it was badass. Wim Pearson fucks him up while Iron Butterfly is playing. That bass before it slow mo right through the big win glass window. Uh, and then, uh, you know, has a final shot with him, his wife, and kid. Got a bit of a scar on his face because of that. That big old cut. I just really enjoyed this movie. I thought this film was. And apparently, I think like people like Brian Dennehy and John Lithgow and such were up for Hannibal Lecter, and Brian Cox got it. But yeah, Hannibal Lecter is not in it that much, but I don't think of it as a Hannibal Lecter movie. You want to see a Hannibal Lecter movie, see Silence of the Lambs, see Hannibal. If you want to see a cool procedural, I don't know if you want to call it a crime thriller, I don't know what the hell you want to call it. I like Seven. I'd probably say I prefer this over Seven. But I do like Seven. But you can't tell me that Seven did not see this film go, hmm. You can't tell me that. <clears throat> you can't tell me that David Fincher didn't see Michael Mann's... I'm sure he saw a lot of Michael Mann's films. <laughs> and you can't tell me he didn't see a film like Manhunter. Which is the end of... I, again, the fact it has the same rating on IMDb as Red Dragon, I think it's bullshit. I just think this is... I think the character, the lead character, has a bit more depth and intensity than Edward Orton's character had. I thought, I, again, I do think Eddie Hopkins was chewing the scenery a little bit in Red Dragon, so I prefer the Hannibal actor. I prefer Sons of Lambs and Hannibal. Yeah, I like Anthony Hopkins, but not in Red Dragon. Not much in Red Dragon, so I give it to Brian Cos. Brian Cos wasn't bad. And yeah, I thought William Pearson did a really great job. I do think Edward Norm wasn't bad, but I do think William Pearson did do a better job, much more intense job. But I, was, I thought I think that's also because of Michael Mann, who he actually did the screenplay. So he did the screenplay and directed it. I mean, it's based on Thomas Harris's novel, but Michael Mann did the screenplay and directed it. So I'm sure a lot of it's due to him. I did some of those scenes that are, are not a Red Dragon. Like, it's just you and me now, sport, or you know, I'll tell you when it's too fucking late, or my sex life, no, it affects yours. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> so, gave you know, cared a bit more intensity and badass to it. And Tom Noonan, again, Tom Noonan is much more creepier villain. I definitely think he's better. Ray Fiennes is not bad. I just think, you know, this character, this villain, is just a creepier villain creepier version of the Tooth Fairy and William Pierce is much more intense and much more interesting character to be honest. The, to be honest, the character of Red Dragon, Edward Norton's not a bad actor, not bad acting, wasn't that interesting of a character. It just it just makes you go, oh, it makes you think of Sons of Lambs 1.2 or 1.3 or 2.4 or whatever, you know, how you want to call it. It's he remembers Sons of Lambs. Which I know is the point, but still, it's, it's, I didn't want. You didn't watch this movie just on its own. Fuck Red Dragon. You just watch this movie. I don't know. I'm sure this has been going on too damn long. Yeah, 40 minutes, pretty much shit. But yeah, I I think it has a great mood, atmosphere to it. I think it has a great uh, music choices and score. I think William Peterson does a great job. I thought it. I definitely give high praise to this film. I have no problems with. I think I've said like a couple little nitpicks, but if you're wondering, there's an, about an 18 minute featurette Inside Manhunter with stars William Peterson, Joan Allen, Brian Cox, and Tom Noonan. And then a little featurette on the cinematographer Dante Spinotti and the trailer for the film. 
But yeah, Red Dragon had a shitload more than this film does, and this film deserves it more. And of course, that film, I think, was a hit, and Uh, to me, this is just a much better version. And I've said that like 10 times now. I'll say it number 11. I think it's a better version than Red Dragon. It's more interesting. It's more... It makes you feel more. I mean, it's more style. It's better directed. I think the much more interesting version of the main character. And uh, just has a good, solid mood to it. That Michael Mann does at times, like collateral and so on. But yeah, be a praise for Man Hunter. Really enjoy the film. Uh, which is why I think this review is like double the length of my review for Red Dragon because I have not, nothing to say for Red Dragon because I'm like, the whole time I'm reviewing Red Dragon, I'm like, I just want to watch this. That's why I watched Red Dragon first so that I could just watch this and like, yeah, this is definitely a better movie, just better version. You want to know why? Go back to the beginning of the video and watch it again. Because I explained it in depth. It's there is 41 minutes now. But thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you on the next video. Later.